Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. I'm Mike Brilla, host of the Inspired Teacher Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hey, music teacher friend. I want to let you know about a free guide called Five Steps to Simplifying Your Lesson Planning. We know as an elementary music teacher how stressful it can be planning lessons every single week for all the grade levels you teach that need to meet the state or national standards, that will reach different learning styles, and that are also fun and engaging for your students. If you've had thoughts like, am I doing this whole lesson planning thing right? Then check out this guide. It will help you with lesson planning with ease. So simply head to subscribe.thedomesticmusician.com forward slash simplifying lesson planning or check out the link in the show notes. Hey friend, I hope you are enjoying your winter break. And if you're listening to this episode after winter break, I hope you had a great one. And whatever time you're listening to this episode, this topic is important. It's about when you feel like quitting music teaching. As you're heading back to school after a break, or maybe you're listening to this and you've already been back to school for a few months, it is there's a lot of feelings that you're experiencing. There's probably been a lot of feelings you've experienced over the last year or a couple of years. And it just seems like more and more music teachers are reevaluating whether you want to stay in the classroom or not. So I wanted to put an episode out here about that to help you think through these thoughts that might be swirling in your head, or maybe you don't know who to go to, to ask questions about this topic. Uh, you know, you can't really talk to other teachers very much because they're going to encourage you to stay or your administrators, obviously you can't talk to them about it. Um, and so this episode I want to say is not just me telling you to quit teaching music. We are going to talk about your views around it and how to move forward. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some things to think through about helping you decide whether you want to stay in the classroom or not. So I do want to say there is a blog post that goes right along with this episode. You can check that out in the show notes. What do you do when you feel like quitting music? I feel like more than ever before, teaching has gotten harder for a variety of reasons. You can obviously, off the top of your head, name a few of those reasons, especially over the last year or two. Maybe you used to love your job and now you just feel like you don't know if you want to do it anymore or it drains you more than it used to or you feel like you used to feel joy driving into work and now it is just kind of something you are going through the motions with. And we're going to talk about all of that today and I want to remind you that you are doing a much better job than you think you are a much better job than you give yourself credit for. And what I'm not going to do in this episode is talk about comparisonitis and imposter syndrome and seeing all the things on social media, comparing yourself to those teachers, because I have addressed that on this podcast a lot. So go back and look at previous episodes. And that definitely can contribute to your feelings of I'm not doing a good enough job, or I don't know if I want to keep teaching music if I'm not measuring up to whatever you're measuring yourself up to. But what I do want to talk about in this episode is you, you as a person, no matter what anybody else around you is doing, 
and your views about work and what you are seeing your job as in dealing with the hard days and how to continue moving forward. So I want to say that your job is not just a job. It's a career. It's your calling and it's your purpose. I really don't find it a coincidence that you're in the exact school and teaching the exact students that you're teaching. I know sometimes you may feel like you're not in the right placement. It may feel like the teacher before you did a better job or someone else could do better with those students of yours. But I firmly believe you're where you're supposed to be for a reason. It doesn't mean that this is the school you're supposed to be at for all 30 years. But I think for this season, this is where you're supposed to be, whether that means you're switching schools next year or not. Although you know this in your head and you know that you're where you're supposed to be, it it's harder to get that into your heart knowledge. And it's harder to really, truly let that sink in and to believe that this is not just your job. You are called to teach music. And it's also okay not to like your job every single day, no matter what career someone enters into, whether they are in the same career for their whole life or whether they transition from one career to the other, everybody's not going to like what they do every day. That's normal. So there are going to be good days. There's going to be positive days. There's going to be good weeks. There's going to be times where you feel like you're trucking right along and you're excited. And then bam, you hit a speed bump and all of a sudden it can make you doubt that you are really truly supposed to be doing this thing called music teaching. When you do realize though that you're teaching music for a reason, it helps you go in each day. This helps you remember why you're doing what you're doing. When it's more than a job and it's a calling and a purpose, it will help light a fire in you that maybe you haven't felt in a while. But along with this, it's important to find seasons of renewal and rest. Obviously, breaks are a perfect time to experience this. I think it's very important that during winter break, during summer break, during any other built-in day off throughout the school year, you find those things that you love to do and you put work aside, truly focusing on just yourself, your family, your friends, relaxing, unwinding, finding fun activities, being out in nature. Those times are so important. You cannot think about work 24-7. It is not healthy. It's not sustainable. And your mind needs time off, just like your body does. You cannot emotionally carry yourself and effectively in your work every day if you're not finding time to pour into you. And like I said earlier, when it comes to comparing yourself to others, there's a lot of episodes on this podcast also about self-care, not just the generic conversation, but really how do you take care of yourself? If you don't take care of yourself over built-in breaks and on weekends and during night, it's like the freight train is just going to keep moving faster and faster and you're not really going to ever be able to stop. Overwhelm will definitely creep in. I am 100% guilty of this. I have one of those personalities that wants to just keep going and going and going. And I always have something else I can be doing when it comes to work. But uh, when I stop and reflect about why am I feeling overwhelmed, it's because I have not been intentional about really not responding to emails, really not logging into work, really not checking social media or whatever that might be. When I'm intentional about stepping away from technology, letting my brain process something else, being intentional about hanging out with my kids or going to dinner with a friend or doing something fun with my husband or just literally doing something I want to do, then I notice that the freight train kind of starts slowing down a little bit or pulls into the station. I know that's a weird analogy, but I don't feel like it's moving as fast. I feel like then I'm really able to intentionally show up to work and I'm not feeling as much of like, oh, here we go again. It's more of, okay, I feel like renewed and refreshed and I'm ready to take on whatever this week holds. It is about finding the balance you need and to be effective both at work and home. So maybe that is something 
one of your goals for the new year, uh, or if you're already listening to this in 2023, one of your goals is finding balance. Maybe that's been a struggle for you and you're not really sure how to go about that. Then let's chat. So send me a message on Instagram. Let's chat about it, how to help you do that. I'll send you some links to some blog posts I've written and send you some things that have worked for me well. Let's talk about dealing with the hard days. We all know they're going to come. And sometimes you don't know when they're going to come. And just all of a sudden, you maybe do show up to school ready to take on the day or take on the week. But there is a group of students that comes in or there's a certain class or there's a certain student. And it can definitely, I don't know why my brain's stuck on trains, but derail what you had planned to do. These hard days are going to come. So when you feel like quitting music teaching, how are you supposed to keep going on those I want to give up type of days? First of all, know that it's okay to take a mental health day if needed, even if you can't find a substitute. I know that is one of the things when I tell music teachers I work with, take a mental health day if you need it. Take a couple days off. The pushback is, but there's no substitute or there's no one to cover my class or I feel guilty about doing that. I've been there, done that. I completely know what you're going through. Um, I know there's a substitute shortage. I know that it's everywhere right now. And I know that that's hard to realize. It feels like you're, you know, leaving your school kind of like, I don't know, in limbo if they can't find anyone to cover your classes. But this is not your problem and it's not your worry. And you are your priority. You don't have to tell anyone why you're taking a day off. You don't have to explain it. It's a personal day for a reason or sick day for a reason, whichever day you choose to, because I know everywhere is different. Some, some of they're all lumped together. I know where I worked, it was sick days were one, personal days were other. So whatever it looks like for you, they're your days. So plan them accordingly. If you just feel like there's a week where you're like, I just really need to take that Friday off. You don't need to explain it. You don't need to justify it. And you don't need to go out of your way to find a substitute. Okay. So one way to deal with the hard days is to literally take days off when or if you need them. I also want to say to plan for ease. Don't try to fit in so much during class time that you're feeling overwhelmed. There is so much you can do as a music teacher. Go back to some of the episodes on this podcast where I've talked about lesson planning and download the guide, by the way, that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode. It's in the show notes about simplifying lesson planning. I created that because that's exactly what I had to start doing in my classroom. I was overwhelmed. I was planning too much. I was trying to fit too much into a class period. And it just was like, causing so much overwhelm for me getting one class out the door and another one into the door that I felt like I barely got through anything because there was too much planned. So if you are feeling overwhelmed when it comes to planning, maybe this is one of the reasons you're experiencing harder days. Maybe you're over planning and then thinking about transitions and activities and the way you're teaching. When you do that and you stop to really reflect about that, it'll help you to move forward. It'll help you to think about where am I planning too much? How am I fitting too much in? What can I do to change this? Think about what's causing you to feel like music teaching is too hard. What is causing those feelings? What Maybe that's new. Maybe these feelings are new for you, or maybe you've been feeling them for the past few months, but have you really stopped to reflect, to think about why? And if you haven't, I really highly suggest penciling that in on your calendar, whether it is a night or a weekend where you can sit and journal or think through why you're starting to have these feelings that things are too hard. If you don't get to the root of the issue, then the issue will keep rearing its ugly head again and again. So take time to process through. Maybe you're going to have a hard time identifying what the root of the issue is. So journal a few things of why you're feeling like teaching music is getting harder and then really, really try to identify that one area that is the root. And let's talk about moving forward. So when it comes to moving forward as a music teacher, the first step I believe is to reevaluate why you became a music teacher in the first place. I touched on this at the beginning of this episode, but I really think it's important for you to definitely think about this. I don't care if you've been teaching one year or 25. When you think about the reason behind becoming a music teacher, 
it is 100% going to help you to continue moving forward. Why did you become a music teacher when you could have been anything else? Think about, do you want to keep doing this year after year? Even though you maybe already know your why or once you've thought about your why, it doesn't mean that just because you've become a music teacher, this needs to be your, your career for your entire life. Some of you listening to this, this is something you definitely 100% are wanting to continue doing year after year after year. You're excited. You don't see anything else for your future. And this podcast is all about teaching elementary music. So obviously that's my main goal and passion. But my other goal and passion for this podcast is to help you be a good person, to be who you're called to be as well. So whether you're teaching elementary music for your entire career or whether you just feel called to do it for a season, it's important to think about what else might you want to do if you weren't teaching or do you want to continue teaching? So think through those. And if you think about what else you might do if you're not teaching, obviously there's a lot of steps involved with that of how would you transition out of the classroom? What else would you do and how would you get into that? I definitely can help you with that during coaching calls. I do one-on-one coaching with teachers all the time, but also one-on-one business coaching. So look at the links in the show notes if you are interested in looking into that more. The last thing you can do when you're deciding about moving forward is to journal about how you're prioritizing your time and if work-life balance is off kilter. There is no perfect job. There really isn't. If you choose to move on to something else besides teaching music, you're still going to feel stress and overwhelm if you don't find the balance you're needing in your life. So I don't want to sit here and say, if you do decide to transition out of the classroom, that everything's just going to be sunshine and rainbows. I did that. I transitioned out of the classroom. I run my own business now. I do a lot of curriculum work. I do a lot of, um, I'm helping coordinate professional development for various music education companies and all kinds of other stuff behind the scenes. I don't really talk about on the podcast, but although I love what I do when I was in the classroom full time, it was stressful and overwhelming at times. Now with the hundred different moving parts of my business, it is still stressful and overwhelming at times. How do I make it work? How did I continue moving forward? By finding balance, by finding the balance and saying no to what needs to be said no to, moving forward with what needs to be moved forward with, setting boundaries on my time and knowing when work, it's time to work and when it's time to turn work off. So I hope you found value in this episode. I am so excited for what 2023 holds in the domestic musician business and also on this podcast. There's so many exciting episodes coming out and some announcements I can't wait to make in 2023. And I am here to encourage you in every way when you are teaching music. So let me know if there's any topics you want me to cover on this podcast. Let me know how you're feeling about teaching music. Like I said, send me a direct message on Instagram. Join our um, community, our Facebook community, the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group. And I would love to have conversations with you in there as well. Have an amazing day, friend, and I will see you soon. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.